Today I'm taking a set of Asioma Duo power meter pedals designed for road cycling and converting them to Shimano SPD compatible mountain bike pedals. Does that sound too good to be true? Well this hack actually works. With the rise in popularity of gravel and trail riding, there's been an increasing demand for power meter options for that kind of cycling. People want to track their numbers on all of their bikes. With SPD being the most common pedal and cleat combination off-road, it's only a matter of time before we see some kind of commercial offering there. If you can't wait for that, and you like a good hands-on project, you're going to love this. Okay, onto the backstory where this idea came from. Now, in late July 2019, a question was asked over on the Trainer Road forums about 3D printing alternate pedal bodies for the Asioma Duos. Mike, aka The Magic Spanner, replied to that post indicating that the Asioma Road pedal bodies are based on the Xpedo Thrust NXL. He also noted that all Xpedo pedal bodies use the same bearing system and theorized we could swap out the road pedal bodies for SPD compatible bodies. Six weeks later on the same thread, user Mad Maximum Modulus had done the conversion and posted the results. Now he'd used the Xpedo M Force 4 bodies on the Asioma Duo pedals and everything worked brilliantly. The use case for Mad Max was for gravel and light mountain bike riding, which is a perfect combo for this setup. Mad Max also did some power comparisons with the Asiomas with the conversion up against the kicker and the results were promising. They were exactly the same as what he experienced prior to the upgrade. The forum thread on the Asioma hack went crazy from there. People claiming this to be the hack of the year, people posting their own conversions and different options with different pedal bodies. It was brilliant to see people getting hands on solving a problem with a hack that worked really, really well. So there's the backstory and here we are today, just about to do this conversion. Now there's two things to note with this. First of all, pedal clearance can be a bit of a problem with mountain bike shoes and it's that pod there, which is the battery and the electronics in the Favero, that may require some shoe hackery. I'll cover that in depth later in the video. Secondly, and most importantly, this is an unsupported hack. Swapping the pedal bodies to something unsupported by Favero officially will void your warranty. You're on your own doing this. I think it's worth the risk. Let's get it done. Okay, here's everything laid out for today's project. I have a brand new pair of Asio Majuro power meter pedals. I have the Expedo M Force 4 mountain bike pedals, brand new in the box. I have all the Allen keys or hex wrenches I need, a torque wrench, the socket required for the inner nut on these pedals, the weight scale, and my new Lake MX218 mountain bike shoes, which I will be using off-road. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Those out of the way, and we'll get the Asiomas unboxed first. So, going big on this project with a brand new set. Hmm. Hurdle number one. Now in the box of Asiomas we have all the manuals, the charge kits, the cleats, and also a pedal wrench they include in the box. So. With what you get for the Asiomas, that's not bad. It's everything you need to get up and running, which is pretty cool. But that's not what we're after today. I'm just after the pedals. So that aside, just out of interest sake, let's weigh these. Brand new. Coming in at 306 grams. Not bad. Okay, so they're the Faveros that we will be converting over. Those pedal bodies will be coming off and we'll be putting these on. Cleats and mounting hardware, they can go there. Out of interest sake, these pedals 
out of the box, 279 grams. Okay. All right, now the fun starts. We need to, let's go right pedal first. I can't see left or right written on these unless I'm missing something, but I'm guessing the word Expedo is to the front. So let's go right pedal first. We will remove the pedal body from these. Six mil on the outer cap. See, there's an inner nut on there we have to get to. We'll do the same with this pedal here. Okay, that was a lot harder to get that freed. Okay, and again, the same deal there the inner nut. So that should fit on there, perfect. And that on there, okay. So we wanna take that pedal body off first. Let's give that a shot. Okay, so this is opposite thread. Not quite the right tool for the job, but it gets it done. Nut is inside. That's where the magic is right here. That's the power meter and the spindle. So the pedal body, changing it over, does not affect the readings. I'll sit that there, we'll get the end cap out. Like so, and we're using the existing end cap back on here from the road. So that's all we need from there. That now goes aside. Don't need you anymore. Now for this one, this pedal body comes off and goes on there. Right side, reverse thread, and there's the nut for that one. And this pedal body comes off. Lots more grease on that one. Lots and lots more grease on that one. Okay. We'll prepare the ASIOMA right side. And the moment of truth. That slides on there just brilliantly. No problems at all. And we want the nut back on. tightens in the reverse. For Vero, say between eight and 10 Newton meters on this, so I always go for nine, right in the center. Might even be easy to perform this on the bike. Okay, we are on, that spins brilliantly. There's a little bit of play side to side, as is the case with the standard pedals and the pedal body on there. It's until we get the cap on. So. Let's go to the Favero cap back on here. So that cap was a little tight, so I'm gonna go to the Expedo cap. Okay, that's much better. 
Okay, it snugs down nice and tight. No play left in the pedal. And there we have it. One down, one to go. Left side pedal should be much easier with the standard direction thread. Again, not the right tool for the job. A standard socket's probably the better way to go here, but this will do the trick for me. Okay, we are off. Again, this is the most important part of the Asioma. This is the spindle and all the electronics. It's where the power meter is held. This is just the pedal body. So we'll get that oil cap, I believe, for Vero call it, on here. Reusing that one. And again, we're probably over greased on here. Oh, not so bad. Perfect. Probably the trickiest part of the whole process is getting that nut on. Okay, that's good to go on. It's already set to nine. Job done. That's on. A little bit of play in there. This is where the end cap comes in handy and we use the mountain bike end cap on the last one. So we'll do the same for this. That's snug down. No play, and perfect spin, look at that. Absolutely brilliant. So there we are. Favero Asioma mountain bike power meter pedals, dual sided. That was as smooth as they said it would be. The next question is, what do they weigh in at? Okay, tipping the scales there at 344 grams with Vero Asioma Duos with the M Force 4 pedal bodies. Not bad at all. Okay, before we get to mounting the hardware on the bottom of the shoe, let's weigh these lake shoes one after the other. So 350 grams right. 353 left, giving me that 703 for the shoes. So the question is, will I have enough clearance on these shoes for the shoe to clip in? 
and that spindle to spin. So you can see the issue there. That's one of the catches with this configuration. So the shoe may need some modification through here, which I'm willing to do. First of all, let's get the cleats on and go from there. Okay, so right shoe, right pedal. Clips in, and those shoes there will definitely need to be modified. That doesn't turn at all. So I will need to trim down the inside of the shoe to allow these pedals to spin. That part there. There we go. So it looks like I'll need to take out pretty much all of that section of the shoe. That's gonna be a bit of a project. I won't be for this bench. It will be for out in the garage. Speaking of, heading out of the garage now, removing the current pedals on the bike and installing the asiomers. Now, a little bit of grease on the spindle. I do require the spacer in here because these are carbon cranks and the asiomers need a little bit of room between the pod and the crank. So it does need the one mil spacer. Left side done, right side done, rinse and repeat. Grease on the spindle, washer on, pedal snug down, and there we are. Now onto the more interesting side of this project, modifying these brand new mountain bike shoes to accommodate that larger pod or spindle. So what we need to take out is just this section through here, not the entire bit of rubber on the side, so only half, which I'll mark here and here. And we need to get a little creative doing this. So out comes the Dremel, and I'm sure I'm doing everything wrong here, but whatever gets the job done. And a few finishing touches with the knife, and then a bit more polish with the Dremel, and we should be good to go. All right, let's clip this in and have a look at the clearance. That's now spinning freely, which was much better than it was. You can see the gap in here. That's looking just fine. So underneath the shoes, looking a little bit agricultural, but look, it's not a beauty show under the shoes here. This does the job and nothing was compromised in the shoe. So it didn't go through to the carbon at all. So look, they're good to go. More shots of the clearance, just to make sure when I'm pressing down or clipping in or clipping out, that's not gonna touch. Looks like there's a heap of room there which is good, and on the other side, there's daylight. And where there's daylight between that and the pedal, it's all good to go. Now one thing to note with this conversion is that the pod sticks up a little higher, probably about a mil or so, than the crank itself. So if you're doing a bit of crank bashing, you may wanna put a crank guard on there, which was a great suggestion by Chad McNeese over in the Trainer Road forums to put one of those mountain bike bash guards on the crank arm. Alrighty, as you saw in the intro, I've already been out riding these and they've worked just brilliantly. But the real test of power is indoors. So for that, we're pulling out the Neo bike which is a pretty good source of accurate power indoors. So snugging those down on the Neo bike. Clipping in here. Now, no comments on the socks. I needed to add a little bit of color. Black shoes, black bike, black flooring. I had to dress things up with some socks. So here's the standard Llama lab test completed on the Neo bike. As we get through our intervals here, those dreaded over and unders were done, and it's on to have a look at the data. No power meter test would be complete without a visit here to the DCR Analyzer site, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how they stack up. So here we are, all is looking very, very good. So standard Llama lab test, as always, it's a very good test of two power sources. Diving in here to the Titans Grove loop that I ride, first of all, up and down, up and down. Everything looking pretty good there. 250, 247 and a half, within a few watts, all looking fine. There's a few dropouts from the Neo bike. So I'm gonna skip over those sections through here. 
and just dive into the meat there. And that is one for one brilliant up against the Neo bike. Now the Neo bike has proven itself against multiple power meters as a good source of accurate power. And these Asio Maduros with the mountain bike hack work just brilliantly. So that's all happy days. Uh, into the sprints, uh, it looks like the sprint is a little different there, but if you dive in a little closer, all that is there is it's a little lag from the bike. So 682, 681 overall for that 15 or so seconds. But the bike appears to be a little slower than the pedals, so the pedals are a little quicker to react. Peak powers, a few watts difference. I'll need to do more tests on that though with the bike itself. My overall review of the bike, the Neo bike, is still a work in progress, but we do know the power is pretty decent. Into the overs and unders, and again, all looking pretty good. This isn't a test of how good the Neo bike is, more so how these pedals track against the accurate power reporting from the Neo bike. And 212, 211 for the overs and unders, spot on. Then some just riding along, riding along. I think I was looking at my phone at the time. Uh, 216, 215, and the last little section through here, which is on the new gravel bikes on Zwift. Uh, 202, 200.9, uh, within two watts there or so. Uh, job done. These results are not surprising. The Favero Asiomas have been a very, very good, reliable source of accurate power. And the change that we did with this hack didn't change any of the electronics in here. So this is the spindle from the mountain bike pedal body and the interface is only where the bearings touch. So none of the electronics were changed. Nothing was touched in regard to how it measures power. It's just how it clips in. And that looks really good. So what we're seeing so far is this working very, very well, but a few ideas to maybe improve on this. And the first one would be to use the end cap or oil cap that comes with the mountain bike pedals. There's a little rubber grommet on the inside there, a little seal, which may add a little bit more waterproofing or dust proofing to the bearings with the conversion we've done. Another thought I had along the lines of, if it's not broken, make it better, would be to find some lighter pedal bodies than the Expedo M-Force 4s that I had. These were quite weighty, they'll be strong and quite durable, but there might be lighter options out there to trim those pedals down a little bit. So there we have it, the conversion from start to finish for my dual-sided mountain bike SPD compatible power meter pedals. My use case for these pedals will be very similar to what was posted over on the forums, and that is gravel riding and maybe some light mountain biking. I think the more hardcore mountain bikers out there would be better suited to use something like a Quark D0 dub in a spider in a more protected area on the bike, or maybe hanging out a little bit longer for the PowerTap G4 hub, which is a disc compatible rear hub power meter. Okay, that's a wrap for today. Thanks for watching this one. I hope you found this one interesting or informative and good luck if you perform the conversion yourself. If you do, let us know in the comments below. And a special thanks to everybody over in the Trainer Road forums who posted their ideas and conversions and results. That motivated me to get more hands on and get me a product, which is a power meter on the bike that I'll be using for months and months to come. I love it. As always, remember to hit subscribe to this channel to be alerted of new videos getting uploaded and hit that join button to support this channel. It's much appreciated.